Hi everyone, my name is Alec Gall and I'm the product manager for ActiveReports.net, a .NET reporting tool built with developers like you in mind. And I'm here to show you how you can build smarter reports directly in Visual Studio with ActiveReports.net. So let's talk about the reporting experience that most developers are already used to. First, there's the context switching. You write your code in Visual Studio, then jump over to a separate report designer, then back again to test and deploy. That constant toggling adds friction and breaks your flow. Second, reports often feel like an afterthought. They're not truly integrated into your app's lifecycle, and that can lead to a lack of cohesion in how data is presented. Third, report design can feel disconnected from your code base. You lose the benefit of having your report logic, data sources, and application code all in one environment. That makes it harder to troubleshoot, harder to refactor, and harder to maintain. And finally, when you're working in a team, reporting consistency can slip. Styles, data bindings, and even output formats can vary if developers are working in different environments or with different tools. These are the kinds of challenges that Active Reports tries to tackle. So, how do we fix the problems that we just talked about? Well, we start by putting reporting where developers live, inside Visual Studio. ActiveReports.net is a full-featured reporting solution built for .NET developers, and one of its most powerful features is the Visual Studio Integrated Designer, a drag-and-drop report designer that works right inside the IDE that you already use every day. You don't have to switch to an external app to build your layout, hook up your data, or even preview your output. Everything happens right inside your solution. And because it's integrated, you get access to your code, data models, debugging tools, and build system all in the same environment. That means fewer mistakes, faster iteration, and smoother handoff between developers and QA teams. Finally, Active Reports supports modern .NET versions up to .NET 9.0, so it fits perfectly into today's app stacks without forcing you to rely on any legacy tech. Now, let's put all that into action. I'm going to walk you through creating a functional and dynamic report using ActiveReports.NET's Visual Studio Integrated Designer from start to finish, all without ever leaving the IDE. Okay, so here we are in the integrated designer. So on the left side here, we have the report explorer. Uh, this will show you basically an outline of everything that's in your report, all the controls, data, etc. cetera. Uh, then we've got our toolbox. That's basically the normal Visual Studio toolbox, but just populated with the active reports controls. Then we've got our solution explorer that I'm sure you're used to, and the properties panel, which I'm sure you're also used to, uh, but it's going to be showing the properties of our controls on our design surface. So first things first, we're going to need to add some data. So I'm going to right click on my data sources on the left side here and click add data source. That's going to pop up this window for selecting a data provider and entering the credentials for the database. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different providers you can choose from and you can even add your own custom providers if you'd like to. I'm going to stick with SQL client here. And instead of filling out this form, I'm just going to paste my connection string straight in here. We'll verify that. Looks like everything's good, and we can click OK. Then from there, we'll need to add a data set from our data source. And this is where you're going to be doing things like adding your SQL query. So I'm going to add my SQL query here. We're going to verify that that is good. Everything looks fine. Click OK. And just like that, we now have our fields straight from the tables in our data source. So from there, I'm going to add a table so we can actually start getting some of that data onto the report. And this here is actually our new wizard that we added just recently. Uh, this is a great way to get a control up and running quickly and with a preset theme, maybe even include some aggregates uh, by default really, really easily. Um, in this case, I know exactly how I want everything to be set up, and it's going to be very specific, so I'm going to skip this and create it myself. So uh, we've got three columns to begin with, and I'm going to need seven. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more. Four, five, six, and seven. <clears throat> and then to get our data into that table, all we have to do is drag straight from the data set onto the design surface. And you can type them in manually if you want, but this is definitely the easiest way. So I'm going to grab product name. I'm going to grab quantity per unit. I'm going to grab unit price. I'm going to grab units in stock. And finally, units on order. 
And from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and style this up a little bit so it doesn't look so basic and ugly. So let's take our unit price and let's change the format on that to a currency so we get a nice formatted currency. Then let's select our whole top row here. And we're gonna change the color here to a hex that I have saved on my other screen here. Let's change that to this nice blue. And then let's also change the background color of all of these cells to this slightly off-white gray color. And then while I'm at it, let's just go ahead and adjust the font a little bit. Maybe make it 11 points and bold it. Okay, and let's just preview that real quick to see how it's going. So technically we have a functional report here, but it's not super useful yet. So let's go back and keep styling that up and make it a bit more useful as well. So let's combine these two cells by merging them. We'll do the same with the header actually. Let's give the quantity per unit a bit more space since that can be a bit long. And let's change these titles a bit as well. Then from here, we're going to add a group. So let's just select our detail row here. And let's insert group. And here, this group expression is what the group's actually going to be grouped by. So in this case, let's group it by our category ID. Then I'm just going to go to layout here and change a few settings. Let's keep repeat group header on, repeat group footer on, and let's turn off prevent orphaned header. Then I'm actually going to move my original header into this group header uh, because I want my header here to repeat at the beginning of each group. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste everything from the original header down to here. I'm going to delete this header. I'm actually going to add another uh, row above that one in the group header. And we're going to have a two row header, basically. OK, so for with this first cell, I'm actually going to do something a little bit differently. Um, instead of just putting something straight into the cell, I'm going to actually nest another control inside the cell. You can do this with a lot of these controls. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the image. So I'm just going to drag my image to the cell, and now it's nested there. Then let's change the source to embedded, the sizing to fit proportional. And then for the value, I'm just going to paste in this little expression. Actually, I'll show it in the bigger view here. Uh, and this is a pretty simple one. All it's doing is doing two strings, so converting to string the uh, category ID's value. And the reason we're doing that is because we actually have some embedded images from our master report here. And they have names that match the category ID, so just one through eight. So after that, let's just go ahead and add the category name to our second cell here. I'll actually go ahead and merge these two cells since we're not going to have a lot in this header. And then I'm also going to merge these four. And for that one, I'll just grab my description. Then for our category name here, let's go ahead and change the font for this one as well. Let's turn that up to, let's say, 16. And let's make that bold. And for our description, let's also modify that one. Let's make it italic. We'll leave it normal. And then we'll actually change the text align to right and vertical align to bottom. And that reminds me, I should actually vertically align this one to the middle. Then just a little bit more styling here. Let's make this a little bit more square since the images are square. We can expand this one out a bit. And let's actually adjust our whole table to fit this space a little better. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and preview this again. So now you can see that we're bringing in those images that I mentioned, and we've got our nice new header here, and our original header is now uh, repeating with each section of the group here. So back to the designer. Okay, now let's work on our footer. So I'm actually going to remove this original footer, since so we're not going to use it, but we are going to use this group footer. Uh, so first, let's just do similar to what we did with the header row and give it a quick bit of styling. So I'm going to change the background color to this off-white again. And let's also grab our font color and change that to this blue. And then I'm going to grab an expression here. And we're going to put that under the product name. And basically, all this is doing is making a string out of these two things. So it's going to start with count colon, and the count of the product names. Then I'm going to do another little expression uh, that's actually going to be a basic aggregate. So that's going to be under my unit price here. I'm just going to do the sum of the unit price field. And then while we're here, we should probably change that um, sell it to a currency as well so it looks just like our other currency above it and let's preview that just to make sure everything's working there we go we've got the count of each product and then the unit price is totaled up and we can see it's doing that for each uh, individual group here all right and now we're going to try to make it a little more dynamic with some conditional formatting so I'm going to select all of these cells in my main detail row here. And for the background color, I'm actually going to set that to an expression. And what this expression is doing is it's an if statement. And it's saying if the value of units in stock plus the value of units on order is less than or equal to 20, set the color to this yellow hex. If not, set it to white. So now if I preview that, you can see it's highlighting any cell where the units in stock and the units on order are getting dangerously low and the person reading the report should consider scheduling an order. Now we're finally going to make use of our last column here and we're going to use an interesting expression called a data bar function. So I'm actually going to edit the background image I'm going to set that source to database. And then for the value, I'm going to use an expression. I'm going to paste in my data bar expression here. And basically, this data bar function is going to create a kind of like a bar graph uh, just for that one value uh, that's based on the units in stock compared to a minimum of zero versus the max uh, that the field can be. And then the color orange. So let's just press OK there. And let's change this background repeat to no repeat. And then if I preview that, we should see our little bars here now. And just to clean that up a little bit, let's select our row. Let's actually add a border to our top and bottom of each cell here. So let's just give this solid and solid, and we'll just make that border color white smoke. Okay, you know, let's preview that. And there we go. We've actually got a pretty nice functional report put together already uh, that should help our manager of our store figure out when they should uh, reorder their products. Now, before we wrap this up, let's just actually go ahead and implement a few interactivity features. Uh, so we'll do drill down and interactive sorting. Uh, drill down will basically give us a little plus and minus icon uh, that we're going to attach to the uh, category name up here uh, to allow the user to expand or collapse the grouped section here. And then interactive sorting is exactly like it sounds. We're going to put that next to uh, some of these columns in the table, and it'll sort the table based on um, alphabetical uh, for the case of the product name and numerical for the case of the unit price. So let's go back to the designer. 
then I'm going to select the three rows that I want to be hidden or displayed uh, based on my uh, drill down icons. So I've selected those three. Then I'm going to go to the visibility property here. And I'm going to change hidden to true so that it's hidden by default. And then I'm going to set toggle item to text box three, which is our category name text box here. And that's actually all I have to do. So if I go into a preview now, we'll now have this little icon like I mentioned and clicking that will expand or collapse each section. And you can have as many or as few collapsed or expanded as you'd like. Uh, and the report will uh, re-render to work with that. All right, so then let's go ahead and do our interactive sorting. So back to the designer again. Then I'm going to select my product name um, header here. And then I'm going to open this property dialog at the bottom of the properties panel. And then click interactive sort. And then I can just click this checkbox to add the interactive sort action to this text box. And then for sort expression, I'm just going to set that to the uh, product name. And then I'm going to do basically the exact same thing for the unit price here. Sort expression will, of course, in this case, be unit price instead, though. Then if I go ahead and preview that again, I'll expand one of my sections here. And now we have these little arrows like what you might be used to in something like Excel. Um, and if you click those arrows for the product name, it's now sorted by alphabetical. And you can do ascending or descending. And then same goes for the unit price with numerical. And that actually brings us to the end of the demonstration. Uh, so hopefully now you're thinking, I'd love to try this in my app. Uh, the good news is you can. <laughs> if you head over to developer.meshius.com slash activereportsnet, you can download a free trial of activereports.net. Uh, you'll get full access to everything I showed today, including the Visual Studio Integrated Designer. Uh, we've also got a library of step-by-step -step tutorials, demos, and API documentation, so you can go from first run to polished reports quickly. Uh, if you prefer to learn by example, you can check out our GitHub samples or jump into our community forums to ask questions and share feedback. And if you want help onboarding or want to see how ActiveReports.net can fit into your architecture, just reach out. Uh, we'd be happy to schedule a demo, and our support team is always happy to help as well if you run into any issues. And with that, we're actually at the end of the session. So again, my name is Alec Gall, and I'm the product manager for ActiveReports.net. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to me directly at alec.gall at meshius.com, and I'll be happy to help. I can answer most questions you may have, and if it's something outside my wheelhouse, I can always get in touch. Uh, with the right person to answer it for you. Uh, thank you so much for taking this time out of your day to learn about active reports, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to hearing from you.